A few weeks ago, I purchased a little Moment Macro lens for my phone. I often get questions on Instagram about which lens I use for mobile phone macro photography. I was using the Squid Cam macro lens before, but that lens system is no longer being made. Every time someone asked me about which lens I was using, I had to tell them that, which is why I decided to buy a new lens that is currently on the market. That way, if I recommend it, it would be available for others to buy. There are so many macro lenses for mobile phones out there. I decided to get the Moment macro lens as it seemed to be similar to what I had been using. I'm not going to describe the packaging and design and installation as there are many reviews on that already available. I just want to talk about the experience of using the lens. The lens is sharp and takes clean and beautiful images with a shallow depth of field. As with all photography, the right lighting conditions are important. The lens comes with a little diffuser hood, but I shoot without it because I tend to get closer to my subjects. And I don't want the hood touching my subjects as some are fragile and others are alive. I shot these photos in the first week with this lens and decided to do a comparison with my DSLR and 100mm macro lens. I didn't spend much time trying to get an exact comparison, I just simply took a shot with my camera of the same subject. Of course, because of the focal length of my DSLR's macro lens, it has a smaller field of view than the phone camera. I use the native camera app on the phone, so those stats on the phone shot don't mean much, but I thought I would post them here for interest nonetheless. You might notice the image on the phone camera has more digital noise. This is often the case with macro images on a phone camera. The degree of noise changes depending on the lighting situation. I tend to forgive this downside due to the many other benefits of shooting with a phone and the way that you can get a wider field of view while capturing small or even tiny subjects. For the DSLR shot, I could not get my camera down any lower without actually laying flat on the ground myself. Yet with the phone, I can just turn it upside down so the lens is almost flush with the ground. I love how you can see the world in a whole new way, kind of like having a bug's eye view. One thing you need to be aware of, and I'm assuming this has to do with the phone's camera sensor, is that if you shoot into the light, you can get some unwanted artifacts in the image. You can see there is color fringing around high contrast areas, and you can also see loss of edge clarity in other areas. I don't feel like this is a huge problem because you just have to learn the limitations of macro phone photography and when you know certain scenarios do not work, you have to work around them by changing your camera angle. One of my favorite things about using a macro lens on my phone is how quickly I can set up and get a shot. I was taking photos of these echinacea flowers with my DSLR when I noticed something tiny hiding inside this flower. I was getting ready to leave when the little jumping spider emerged. It was so tiny, I knew if I wanted to get close enough, I had to use my phone and little macro lens for the shot. I had just a few seconds and snapped some photos before the spider went back into its little home. Here are a few more photos from my first week using the Moment macro lens. I'm happy with the lens. The shot of the bee is my favorite so far. Let me know if you have used this lens or any other mobile phone macro lens. I'd love to hear what you think of them.